in this session we will learn about the critical path method uh, actually uh, if we have given a network and if there are uh, various paths by which the project can be completed then uh, how to determine what is the critical path and what are the properties of the critical path so those things we will learn in this video so critical path method critical path method is also a method which is developed uh, to calculate the network or to understand the network so it's a part of uh, project management only l du port was a company who came up with this method first in this method uh, we will uh, discuss we will uh, estimate the total uh, project duration by finding what are the possible ways the project can be completed so network will give you the internal relation with the activities and uh, the events which is happening which are the milestones so uh, with the uh, limited uh, knowledge that we have we can create a network uh, by knowing the activities and the projected duration of individual activities so in that thing so the critical path is the longest path in the network suppose we have we have given a network so we can identify the possible paths in a network and among that who or whatever network takes the longest will be known as the critical path so there are some peculiarities related to critical path so one of them is that the activities known in the critical path is known as critical activities so why this is critical means since this is the longest path and which it takes the uh, total project duration so length of the critical path will be the project completion time so these activities are also critical because delaying any delay in any of this activity will uh, have a delay in the complete project so the our project target may not be fulfilled if any of the delay which is happening in the critical activity so we have to be careful uh, in this activities so more stress and more uh, resources were um, deployed to for this activities because these are the critical activities now the head slack and the tail slack associated with the critical activities are zero we we will now send from the earliest starting and finishing uh, by forward passing and backward passing so we will able to uh, establish what are the uh, for individual nodes what are the head event uh, slack and tail event slack so head event slack is nothing but for an event which is uh, for a head event for an activity there will be head and tail events so for the head event what is the difference between the earliest possible time and the latest uh, possible time for finish so that will detect the head event slack and for the starting for the earliest start and uh, latest start so what is the difference between that will give you the head event so for all the activities in the critical path the uh, head event and tail event slack will be zero so this is one of the property of the critical path the second property is all floats associated with the critical path is also zero so we have already learned about the floats and uh, uh, slack which is happening so for a critical path all the floats will be zero the total float the free float the interference for all things will be zero for a critical path so this is these are two uh, checks for which we can find out whether the path is critical or not another thing is there could be multiple critical paths in a network because suppose uh, there are uh, the paths that we trace for completing so path is nothing but uh, the uh, the path, uh, the sequence of operations interlinked to each other from the starting node to the finishing node of the project is known as a path okay so the, there will be multiple path with the same project duration uh, 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 duration of the activities so in those cases there could be multiple critical paths as well okay now let's uh, understand uh, and learn how we can estimate the project completion time or the project duration which is nothing but the length of the critical path from a, an example for this table uh, the activities and the precedence relationship with the activities and its duration is given now for finding out what is the critical path we have to establish the network so this uh, the better way is to do is uh, 
uh, there are two methods uh, for which we can plot the activities one is arc activity on arc and activity on node so the better way, to, way is for activity on arc so uh, the, uh, the activity we represented with an arrow head with an arrow uh, the events will be in the uh, uh, circles okay so uh, for this uh, problem which is given so let's uh, find out uh, how can we uh, create the, this network so the precedence relation is given which means that what is the preceding activity to this one so suppose take the case of s uh, s uh, preceding activity is q so which means that s can be said only after the combination of q and p can be said only uh, r can be said only after the completion of p and here this means that uh, for activity t to happen r and s has to be finished similarly for u r and s has to be finished right so which means that uh, r is a successor of p s is a successor of q t is a successor of r and s like that okay so the precedence uh, uh, there is no activity which is preceding q and p which means that it is fr from the starting node these activities are starting so this is my starting node of my uh, project so i can start p i can start q so this is my p and uh, the duration can be written here and this is my q and the duration is 4 right now uh r is from p and s is from q and r and s are merging to form t so you can uh, see that it's a merging event so i can put it here so this uh, anyhow you have to put the arrow head so don't forget to do that otherwise you will not get the direction sense. right so this will be r is from p having five units and s is from q having five units okay now you can see that v and uh, okay from this node r and s is producer of uh, uh, means t and r and s is the producer of u so there are two activities which is uh, coming from here also which is t and u so let it be t with 7 and u u with 5 now uh, v starts from t and w starts from u since there is no other activity other than v and w so it will be leading to the final activity final node so there will be the final node so these both will merge to this final node so this will be uh, from t v is happening and two units and from uh, u w is happening having 10 units so we can number it and uh, these numbers will uh, represent the okay this uh, way we can construct a network okay now uh, if you uh, if you see uh, what are the possible way where we, which we can connect from one to seven so one is my starting node for the project and seven is the finishing node of my project so in one to seven what are the possible ways i can do that thing so these are known as paths so i want to estimate the possible path so p so starting from this way this is one one this way i will go one that's one thing so that will be p r t v this is one one path this this is the one right another thing is p r u w another thing is q s t u and also it is q s u w is there any other path possible i think no there is only four paths which is possible now uh, compute what is the total time for uh, duration for this each path so this will be p plus r plus t plus u will be 3 
by 8, 8 plus 5, 15, 8 plus 7, 15, 15 plus 2, 17. Now this one, 8, 8 plus 10, 18 plus 5, 23. Now Q, S means 9, 9 plus 7, 16 plus 2, 18. This will be 9, 9 plus 10, 19 plus uh, 5, 24. So among these four parts, we can see that U S U uh, Q S U W is having four, uh, 24, which will be the highest. So among this part, this is the uh, this uh, is the longest. So this will be the critical part. This is how you can uh, compute the critical path for a simple network. And also, since we have a cross check, so we can find out the earliest and uh, latest time for individual activity. And we can see the, uh, whether the all the slacks and floats are zero. So let's find out uh, for individual activity. So uh, the starting of this can be zero. So let's start time for one is zero. So two, it will be zero plus three, three. This will be four. This will be, there are two ways, three plus five, eight. Three, uh, three plus five, eight or five plus four, nine. So it will be nine. So this way, 9 plus 7, 16, 9 plus 5, 14. So this will be 16 plus 2 or 14 plus 10. So 14 plus 10 will be highest, so 24. Now with the latest backward pass we can do. So I will represent it with another, this thing. So 24 uh, will be the one which is here. So 24 minus 2, which will be, uh, 22, 24 minus 10, 14. Uh, for the fourth node, it will be 24 minus 7, which will be um, 15, or 14 minus 5, which will be uh, 9. So 9 will be the least. So in the backward passing, we least we have to take. So for this one, it will be 9 minus 5, which is 4. It will be 9 minus 5, which will be 4. This will be 4 minus 4, 0, and 4 minus uh, 4 minus 4, 0, 4 minus 3, 2, uh, 1. So minimum will be 0. So this, this is the forward passing and uh, backward passing I have done. So we can find out the individual, uh, this thing, or also you can see uh, which was our critical activity. Critical activity, I will, I will, I can mark with the double line. So this is our critical activity, this one, this one. This one, this one. For uh, the Q, uh, what will be the, uh, let's calculate for the tail events for this particular activity. So for Q, one is the tail event and the slack is zero minus zero, zero. For S, the three is the tail event and uh, the slack is zero, four minus four, zero. For U, four is the tail event and the slack is nine minus nine, zero. For uh, W, six is the, uh, tail event and the slack is 14 minus 14, zero. So all the uh, tail event slacks are zero. Now calculate for the head event. So for, uh, for, for Q, three is the head event. So slack is four minus four, zero. For uh, this S, uh, four is the head event, nine minus nine will be zero. For U, six is the head event, 14 minus 14, zero. For W, seven is the head event and 24 minus 24 is zero. Now you can see that all the slacks, uh, all the slacks are head event and tail event slack is zero. The total float you can also see uh, for Q, uh, it will be four minus zero minus four, which means that uh, total float, total float will be LF minus ES minus T. So four minus four minus zero will be four. For this S1, S, it will be nine minus five minus four, which will be zero. 14 minus, uh, for U, it will be 14 minus 9 minus 5 will be 0. And for the last one, W, 24 minus 14 minus 10 will be 0. So all the floats are 0, all the slacks are also 0, which means that this is uh, actually our uh, uh, critical path. Okay, so this is how you can um, make a network, find out the slacks and uh, decide the, which is a critical path. So for simple network, it's better way is to 
just to uh, uh, get what are the critical um, what are the possible paths among which which will be the critical path so since there are only four paths so it, it will be very easy suppose if there are multiple uh, paths multiple uh, means uh, like 5 uh, 6 or 7 uh, paths is possible then uh, better go for the forward passing and uh, backward passing to get the slacks and to get the critical path okay